Praise the Lord. You are here for something special. I said, Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to our special Sunday service today in Jesus' name. Looks like you are getting ready for something special. Something unforgettable is happening in my life today. Happening in my family today. A great revival in our church. It has started, I pray you will connect. Somebody there said you will connect. I see your hands up, raise up those hands. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray there will be a connection with everyone for heaven today in Jesus' name. Help us to see Jesus afresh and to see your promises afresh and to see our lives afresh that will follow, fulfill, walk in the steps of Christ. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. Something is already taking place in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. God has blessed you already. You can sit down. I'm coming to Hebrews chapter 10. I was looking at verse 7. Hebrews chapter 10. We're looking at verse 7. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is reaching of me to do thy will, O God. I want you to look at the words and the brackets there in the volume of the book, it is written of me. As we look at the life of Jesus Christ, as we look at his ministry, and you point to his death, and you see the resurrection, and then you come to the ascension, and you come to the exaltation of Jesus Christ, our Lord. His life, his death, his ministry, everything concerning him was not haphazard. It wasn't happenstance. It wasn't something that just happened. It was well planned. And everything had been written beforehand. Nothing by accident. He knew what was written concerning him. And he fulfilled all things that were written concerning him. Look at that verse again. Then said I, Lo, I come. And then he says, as he says, I come, he said, from that point, I entered this world. I knew every detail. I knew every sentence. I knew every chapter. I knew every phase that my life will take in the volume of the book. It is written of me. And then it says, to do thy will, O God. God is the master planner. And as we look at Jesus Christ, and we're talking about, I was thinking about, and we're consecrating our lives to walk in his steps. You need to understand that as the life of Jesus Christ was planned out, well planned. Your life is planned out by God. I said your life is planned out by God. I want you to understand it's not just for Jesus alone. Think about Joshua. Think about Solomon. Think about Josiah. Think about Cyrus. Think about Jeremiah. Think about Paul and many others before they came into the scene and before they began to do what they began to do. It was reaching of them. 
And if that is so about Christ, and if that is so about all these men who have mentioned, and if that is so about how many people you find in the Bible reaching up me, reaching concerning me, reaching about me, you can tell about yourself. Your life is not an accident. Your being here today is not an accident. Your coming into this church is not an accident. Your life is well planned out by God. Look at this, Exodus chapter 17. In Exodus chapter 17, I read from verse 13. And Joshua is confited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. You know what happened there? Amalek had just been defeated, but there were some remnants still remaining. And God said, Moses, write it down and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua so that after you have gone he will say lo I come I'm taking the place of Moses and I come to do that which was written concerning me your life is well written out in the accounts of God you will fulfill that which he has written concerning you. If you say amen, I will not close the meeting. Amen. We're looking at 2 Samuel chapter 7. 2 Samuel chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 12. In 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 12, And when thy days be fulfilled, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. I will search up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, which shall proceed. Solomon was not born yet, but this was written concerning him. And then it says, I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name. I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. That was written concerning Solomon. David, you will not build the house. Somebody is coming. It's a child of yours. Write this down. You will not build the house, but the one that shall proceed out of you shall build the house. And Solomon was not even here yet. And later he came. And when Solomon came later, he knew this was written concerning me. And if he did any other sin, if he did every other sin and did not do that, his life would be a waste. Something written before me. Look at First Kings chapter 13. First Kings chapter 13. And I'm reading here from verses 1 and 2. First Kings chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Look at this, look at this. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar. Thus says the Lord, behold a child shall be born. Not born yet, not born yet but this is reaching reaching down concerning this child that will be born. It says behold a child shall be born unto the house of David what's the name? I say what's the name? What's your name? Somebody is going to fulfill what was written concerning him before he was born. You are the man I'm talking about today. You are the woman I'm talking about today. Your life is a purposeful life. 
Your life is a well planned out life. Look at this Joshua by name. Upon thee shall he offer the priest of the high places that born incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. It was specially written for him. Isaiah chapter 44. Isaiah chapter 44. And I'm reading from verse 28. That's the last verse there. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 28. That says of Cyrus, He is my shepherd, and shall perform all my pleasure. Again, Cyrus was not yet born, and was even a gentle. He will be a gentle king when he comes. And here his life had been planned out for him. And it says, Cyrus. He is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built, and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. And then it goes on. Look at verse chapter 45. It's very important. Chapter 45, thus says the Lord to his anointed. Who is this anointed? To Cyrus. And he says, whose right hand I have pulled in to subdue nations before him. And I will lose the loins of kings to open before him. And it shall leave gates, and the gates shall not be shut. And I will go before thee. I will go before thee. Actually, he was talking to Cyrus, but today he's talking to you. He's talking to me. I make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Look at this. And I will give thee, and I will give thee the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. That is, the Lord said, Cyrus, he was not born yet, he was not born yet. I'm planning out your life for you. This is reaching down before you are born. And when you come into the world, you will fulfill that that is reaching concerning you. All the treasures you will need, all the materials you will need to get it accomplished, it will provide for you. That thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, I am the God of Israel. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect, I will have e I will I will have even called thee by thy name. Look at this, look at this. I have so named thee. Tell me the rest of that verse. Though thou hast not known me, you might say, I didn't even know the whole Bible. I don't know all the experiences. I don't have this. I don't have yet. But you know, before you know all those things, he plans your life for you. Your life will not be disorganized. Your life will not be confused. Jeremiah, I'm reading from chapter 1. Jeremiah, chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, set thee apart, and I ordained thee to be a prophet unto the nations. Reaching, reaching down before Jeremiah was born. This has been planned by God. And now we come to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 15. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9. And we're reading from verse 15. It says in verse 15, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, talking to Ananias, For he is a chosen vessel unto me. Are you there? Is he talking to you today? Are you getting something that your life from now on will be a well-planned life? 
it will be a happy life. It will be a life that is purposeful in Jesus' name. And since God has mapped it out, and since God has already structured it out, and he said, I brought you to this world, I brought you to the kingdom, I brought you to this church for a purpose, and I'm going to fulfill my purpose in your life. Go thy way. For ye is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and before the kings and the children of Israel. And I will show him. He doesn't know it yet. I will show him. He doesn't know the places he will get to. I will show him. He doesn't know all the details of what he will do. I will show him. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. From all the scriptures we have read, you can tell that God has his plan for his only begotten son, and God has his plan for all his sons and all his daughters. Christ knew, and true believers before us, they knew that their life on earth was not an accident. They fulfilled what was reaching personally, personally. You are not following the crowd. They are not saying because he is doing that, I must do this. Personally, they knew that their lives were planned by God. Purposefully, purposefully. Now they know that's my target. Now they knew that's my destination. Now they knew this is the reason why I was born. This is the reason I was born again. And therefore they followed what was reaching purposefully. They followed what was reaching prayerfully. They said, Lord, I need your grace. Only the grace of God can carry me through. And I'm going to follow the plan of God. And I'm going to fulfill the plan of God personally, purposefully, prayerfully. And I'm going to do it promptly. Now that I know that my life is planned out for me. There's no time to waste. He knows all the years it will take for me to get it done. And so, if I'm going to fulfill it, now is the day I must start. Today is the beginning of a new era in your life. Promptly. Not only that, they did it pleasantly. Pleasantly. They were no more complaining. Lord, if I'm going to do that, how about him? How about her? There are no more complaining. If I'm going to do this, if all this burden is on me, if all this challenge is on me, and if I'm going to go this way, I about him, I about them. No, they did it pleasantly. And they did it passionately. Passionately. You can tell as they run, you can tell as they walk, you can tell as they perform. They did it with all their passion, with all their heart, because they said, there is no other person who can do this. There is no other person who will do this. This was mapped out for me, and therefore they did it passionately. They did it perseveringly. When they appeared tired, they said, no, I cannot be tired now. I must finish. You cannot be tired. You will finish. And therefore, they persevered. They persevered. And they went to the knee. All the grace I need. All the strength I need. He will give it to me because here is the way the Lord has marked out for me. And there is what was reaching before me for me to fulfill. Therefore, they did it. They did it perseveringly. You know, they did it progressively. They finished stage one, they climbed stage two. They finished stage two, they climbed stage three. And they were progressing in their lives. Check up every one of them. And check up the Lord Jesus Christ at the age of 12. Didn't you know I must be about my father's business? That's one stage. When he became Sachi and he came to Jordan, and then John the Baptist said, you are the one to baptize me. Are you coming to me? He said, let it, let it be like that. To fulfill all righteousness. And then the healing. And then the salvation. And then the preaching. And then the cross, Jerusalem. And then when he got there and he said, it is finished. You see, in your life, 
when you know it's been purposed for you, it's been planned for you, and it is reaching concerning you, you will do it progressively. They did the will of God and they fulfilled what was reaching personally. They did it purposefully. They did it prayerfully. They did it promptly. They did it primarily. Primarily, this is the only thing for me to do. Priority. You set your priority. You're not beating about the bush. You're not trying this and trying this and trying that. You focus your attention on this one thing I do. They do it primarily, pleasantly, passionately, perseveringly, progressively. They do it peculiarly. They are peculiar. They are peculiar. Look at what Joshua is doing. There's no competition with Caleb. Look at what Josiah is doing. There's no competition with any other person. And look at what Solomon built. There was no competition with any other person. It was peculiar to them. This is my assignment on earth. Thank God you have an assignment. Your life will not be empty. Your life will not be worthless. Your life will not be useless. And then the deed privately and publicly. Meet them in the private, this one thing I do. Meet them in the public, this one thing I do. They did it because this was reaching beforehand concerning them. They did it privately and publicly. Come back to Hebrews. Now you understand. Hebrews chapter 10, and I'm reading from verse 7. Hebrews chapter 10, we're looking at verse 7. Then said I, then said I, lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me to do thy will, O God. To do thy will, O God. I want you to look at Luke chapter 22. We're reading from verse 37. Luke chapter 22. We're reading from verse 37. And it says in verse 37, verse 37, Luke chapter 22, For I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. This that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors for the things concerning me have an end, a goal, a destination, a purpose, a destiny. For the things concerning me has an end. Look at Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 44. Luke chapter 24 verse 44. And he said unto them, these are the words which I speak unto you while I was yet with you. Look at this, look at this. That all things must be fulfilled which were written. All things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Concerning me. Concerning me, the things concerning Christ, they were fulfilled. And now, First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. First Peter chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 21. It says in verse 21, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. You know what that means? He discovered what was written concerning him. I discovered what was written concerning me. And like he walked in the steps of what was written concerning him, I now walk in the steps of what was written concerning me. And then you'll be able to say at the end of life, I know I come to do thy will. 
as it was written concerning me. Today, we're looking at the message following and fulfilling what was written of Christ. Following and fulfilling what was written of Christ. Three points we're looking at. Number one, purposefully fulfilling what was written of Christ. That's what he came to do it. And he knew it was written concerning me and purposefully it fulfilled what was written concerning him. Point number two, passionately following what was written of the cult. The Christian is referred to as the cult, not just called the cult. And this point number two, passionately following what was written of the cult. Number three, personally finding, you must find it out. You must search it out. You must not allow your life to be floating. You must not allow your life to be meandering. You must not allow your life to be beating about the bush and will say, what are you doing? Whatever came to my hand, that's what I do. I see what that fellow is doing, that's what I'm doing. And I see what everybody is carrying now, that's what I'm carrying. No, personally finding what was reaching concerning the conqueror. Personally finding what was reaching concerning the conqueror. I have conquerors in the house today. I said, I have come across in the house today. And you must find out what has been reaching down concerning the conqueror, and that is what you are going to do. You. Me. You will do it in Jesus' name. Number one, number one, purposefully following, purposefully fulfilling what was reaching of Christ. We're coming to Isaiah chapter 15. Isaiah chapter 15, and we're reading from verse 5. Isaiah chapter 15, reading from verse 5, the Lord God has opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. I gave my back to the smiters, and my cheeks to them that plucked off the air. I hid not my face from shame and speeching, for the Lord God will help me. Therefore, I shall not be confounded. Therefore, look at this, therefore, have I set my face like a flinch, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. I set my face as a flinch. I focused on just this one thing. I purposefully followed after this single direction. I set my face as a fleet. Actually, that was written of Christ. And look at Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, reading from verse 51. Luke chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 51. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. You see that? As we compare that verse with Isaiah, chapter 50, verse 7, he set his face. He set his mind. It's like you set your watch. It's like you set your time. It's like you set the compass facing this direction. You will face the right direction in life. You'll not be facing the wrong direction. And people will not pull you here, pull you there. You'll face the right direction in Jesus' name. At the end of your life, you'll be happy. You'll be fulfilled. You will look at everything and the Spirit of God will register in your heart. Like Jesus Christ, like he walked and he followed those steps and he fulfilled what he should have done. You will fulfill what he should have done. Look at Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 17. Luke chapter 4. We're looking at verse 17. Luke chapter 4, verse 17, and there was delivered unto him 
the book of the prophet Isaiah. Look at this, look at this. And when he had opened the book, when he had opened the book, tell me what follows. He found the place where it was written. He found the place where it was written. You will find the place where it was written for you. You see, he got the book. And then he said, there is something here that was written concerning me. And he found the place where it was written. Look at verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. That's what, what was written. It was written concerning him. And he has sent me to heal the broken hearted. And to preach the deliverance to the captives. And the recovering of sight to the blind. And to set at liberty them that are bruised. You know what he did? He went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. You know why? He found the place where it was written concerning him. And then he looked at all those details. He said, that's written concerning me. That's written concerning me. And he did exactly that. He didn't copy the religious Pharisees. He didn't copy the religious Sadducees. He didn't copy anyone. And it wasn't a cultural sin, a traditional sin. The things that were written beforehand concerning him. Look at verse 19. And to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fasting on him. They never saw a purposeful person like that before. They never saw a person that committed himself to the primary calling like that. They never saw anybody that would find the place where it was written concerning him. But they found it and read it to them. And then look at verse 21. And they began to say unto them, tell me, tell me. This day you'll begin a purposeful life today. The time of going about here and there, beating about the bush, that time came to an end yesterday. Today is a new day in your life. And you'll be able to say, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. It will be fulfilled in your life. Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 31. Luke chapter 18. And here we're reading from verse 31. Talking about Christ. He purposefully fulfilled what was written of him, of Christ. In Luke chapter 18, verse 31. And it says over here, Luke chapter 18, verse 31. Then he took unto him the twelve. And said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem. And all things that are reaching by the prophet, he said, We're going to Jerusalem. Whatever happens there, don't let that shock you or surprise you. Don't say, How could this have happened? How did that happen? Because everything that happens to Christ had been written ahead of time. And he knew that. He knew that. That's why I said in the volume of the books, it is written of me. And so he says, all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. Praise the Lord. You know, a person like that will not have anxiety. A person like that will not have any restlessness. A person like that will not have any pressure, will not have depression. He knows all things will be accomplished that were written. Anything that was not written concerning me, all that one is tricking out, is taking out. Whatever has not been written concerning you will not happen. Any bad thing, any evil thing, and you see that Satan just woke up this morning and said, uh -uh, look at this man, he's making progress. And then he's going to do something. God is going to check up his record. 
whatever was not written concerning you will not be done in Jesus' name. Look at, look at verse 32. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles and shall be, and shall be mocked and spitefully entreated and spitted on. And they shall scorch him and, he, and put him to death. And the third day, the third day, he shall rise again. I thought I have an amen. amen. Reaching ahead of time. And reaching concerning Christ. Look at chapter 21 of Luke. Luke chapter 21. I'm reading here from verse 22. Luke chapter 21, verse 22. For these be the days of vengeance that all things how many things that all things tell me out aloud how many things that all things which are reaching which are reaching nothing comes outside the bracket the things which are reaching that all things which are reaching must be fulfilled uh, let me show you just a few we're coming to psalm 22 psalm 22 and I'm reading from verse 1. Things that are written, all things that are written concerning Christ, those are the only things that are to be fulfilled. All things that are written in heaven concerning you, those are the only things that will happen. I said those are the only things that will happen. Anything the demons are just bringing off afresh, no, that's not in the record. Anything that enemies are bringing up afresh, and you know, we we'll want to bring this against him, that's not, that's not among the things that are reaching, they will not be done. Your life will be free. All the chains and the shackles will be broken up, and you'll be going in the direction of all that is reaching. Psalm 22, I'm reading from verse 1. Psalm 22, verse 1. My God... My God, why hast thou forsaken me? You remember Jesus said that on the cross of Calvary. You know why? It was reaching. He came to fulfill that. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, all they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the leaf and they shake the head saying, He trusted on the Lord that he will deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. That's what they said when he was on the cross. He wasn't surprised. He wasn't surprised. When people jest, you're not surprised. When they mock, you're not surprised. When they try to slander, you're not surprised. That was reaching. And because it was reaching, it doesn't come to you by surprise. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, for the dogs have come past me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. It was written. It was written. And it said, all things that are written concerning me must be accomplished. Look at verse, uh, look at verse 18. They part my garments among them and cast lords upon my vesture. It happened because it was reaching. Nothing that is not reaching in your life will be fulfilled. It was reaching. It was reaching. And Jesus knew no anxiety, no regret, no crying, no tears. Why are things like this? Why are things like that? It was reaching. And the grace of God will see you through. I said, the grace of God will see you through. Yeah. But now that's not the end. Look at verse 27. Verse 27. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. And all the kindred of the nation shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord's and he is the governor among the nations and he knows that will be done that's why the bible says for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross because he knew that the cross was not the end the crown was coming and eventually he finished 
I will finish. I will not be finished, but I will finish. You will not be finished, nothing will finish you. Nothing will spoil, spoil your life. But you will finish. Look at it now. In John chapter 19. John chapter 19, verse 30. John chapter 19, verse 30. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, tell me, he said, I can't hear my church. It is finished. And he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost. He said, it's finished. Every sentence written concerning me is finished. All the details of my life, it is finished. What was written that I will accomplish at my first coming, it is finished. And he bowed, he said in submission, he gave up the ghost and he went to heaven. Christ purposely fulfilled all that was written concerning him. His heart, his mind, his eyes, his focus were on what was written. He turned neither to the right hand nor to the left hand. He pleased the Father perfectly in word and in deed, in thought and in action, in attitude and in comportment, before the crucifixion and on the cross, all things, in all things, all through his earthly life, he lived to fulfill what was written concerning him. And he has left that example for you and for me. He is a perfect example. Point number two now. Passionately following what was reaching concerning the cult. We're coming to First Peter. First Peter chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 21. First Peter chapter 22 verse 1. For even here unto were ye called, you are the called of God. He called you to repentance, thank God you have repented. He called you to salvation, thank, you, you are, thank God you are saved. And he called you to holiness, thank God you are holy by his grace. He has called you to the kingdom. You are in the kingdom, your place in the kingdom will not be empty in Jesus' name. For even here unto what you called, the called of God. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should, tell me, follow his steps. Follow his steps. What will that mean? Does that mean what he ate? I'm going to find out what he ate. I'm going to eat that. I'm going to find out the kind of clothes he put on. I'm going to put that on. The major thing he's saying is that Christ discovered, Christ found out, and he followed what was written concerning him. You find out what was written concerning the Christian and concerning the cult, concerning the followers of Jesus Christ, and you purposefully, passionately, prayerfully follow what was written concerning the cult. And let me show you those two words, the cult, the cult, Romans chapter 1. In Romans chapter 1, reading from verse 6, Romans chapter 1, verse 6, among whom are ye the cult? Not just that you are called, you are the cult, the cult of Jesus Christ. To all that be in Rome, Beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you. And peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I am the called. I can't hear our people. He has called you. You have responded. You are the called. And you'll find out what was reaching concerning the called. We're coming to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. 
I'm reading from verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good. For them that love God, them that love God, are they here today? Them that love God, I said, are they here today? Them that love God and to them who are they called. Not just that they are called, they are they called according to his purpose. And he says, all things will work together for good in your life. You give your life to the Lord Jesus and you are saved. You hear his call and then you say, yes, Lord, I respond to that call. And I am the called. And it says, all things will work together for good in your life. It's watching over what has been reaching concerning you. Your individual life. You are not an accident in this world. And you are not an accident in the kingdom of God. It's watching over you. Something has been reaching. Good things have been reaching. They'll be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 29. For whom he did, he did for no. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. To be conformed to the image of his son. You are in conformity to Christ because he walked, he lived, he labored, he did, he performed all that was reaching. And now that you are conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are walking and you are living and you are performing according to that which was reaching. It says to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. We're coming to Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 4. Romans chapter 15. Reading from verse 4. For whatsoever things were reaching. A four time. Whatsoever things were reaching. A four time. They were reaching for our learning that we, through the comfort, the patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. You're looking at your Bible, you say, okay, that was reaching. It was reaching in the form of a promise. It was reaching in the form of a commandment. It was reaching in the form of prophecy. It was reaching in the form of prayer. And they were reaching a full time for the believers who are following the Lord Jesus Christ. Your life is going to be purposeful. Romans chapter 12, verse 17. Romans chapter 12, Verse 17, recompense to no man evil for evil. You know why? It has not been reaching concerning you that you will do evil. You will not do evil. Your life will not end up in evil. You will not fight a useless fight. You will not fight a fight that will bring premature death into your life. Because, you know, that has not been reaching concerning you. Look at that, verse 17 again. It says, recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as it lies in you, live peaceably with all men. Look at verse 19. Deadly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Why? Because that's not your job. That has not been reaching concerning you. Because it says, rather, give place to wrath. For, tell me. For, tell me out aloud. It is reaching. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. God says, that's my area. That's my arena. That's my job. All the things that militate against your life, leave that in my hand. It is reaching. I will fight your battles for you. I will conquer the adversaries for you. So you're not going to waste your resources. You're not going to waste your strength fighting this and fighting that. After all, can you fight effectively as God Almighty? God said, 
what are you doing? That's my job. I'm supposed to do that one. Leave that to me. And you're going to find no adversary will hinder your progress. No persecutor will hinder your progress. You're going to accomplish your life without getting into any of those things. Therefore, in verse 20, if an enemy hunger, feed him. Ah, if I feed him, he will have more energy to do the evil he has been doing. No, that, that's not what is written. That's not what is written. Feed him, you will conquer him. You will overcome him. If he be thirsty, if he's, if he's thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, look at what is written, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Every evil sin in your life is overcome. That's what is written concerning the cult. We're looking at First Peter, First Peter, chapter one, and I'm reading from verse fourteen. First Peter, chapter one. We're reading from verse fourteen. Thank God, your victory has started in a new way. In First Peter chapter one, verse fourteen, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to your former lust, in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Verse sixteen, tell me. Tell me out aloud. Uh, you know why you are to be holy? That's what was written concerning you. You know why you are to be righteous? That's what is written concerning you. It says, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. From this day, the path of victory is before you. And that which is written, will be visible in your life in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. amen. Point number three now. Personally, personally, from today, you will take a personal decision. Personally finding what was written of the conqueror. Personally finding what was written of the conqueror? We're coming back to Luke chapter 4, verse 17. Luke chapter 4. And we're reading from verse 17. In Luke chapter 4, verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place. He found the place. You will find the place. He found the place where it was written. If you're going to be a conqueror, you must find the place where it was written concerning you. And I have conquerors in the house today. I said, I have conquerors in the house today. Yeah. Victors you are. Yeah. Overcomers you are. Yeah. Masters you are. Yeah. You will not be defeated in the battles of life. Yeah. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Look up here for a moment. Before David came to the field, the battlefield, which was in 1 Samuel chapter 17, 
far back in chapter 13, before we ever had the name of David, God said unto Samuel, I've rejected Saul, and I have found a man more righteous than he. Where is he? Where is he? Chapter 15, we couldn't find him. And then in chapter 16, God said, go to the house of Jesse and appoint, anoint someone there for me. He will fulfill all my will. And there was singing, rejoicing in the courts of heaven. I have found a man. I have found a man. His name is David. He will fulfill all my will. And David did not even know anything about that, about the joy in heaven, celebration in heaven. I found a man. The Lord has found you today. And then Jesse brought out all the children. Jesse did not know that the man is David. Your family did not know that you are the man. They don't know that you are the woman. And then uh, Samuel said, the anointing of the Lord is before me. This looks like he. Nobody will take your place. Yeah. Nobody will replace you. Yeah. And then God said, uh -uh, don't, don't go that direction. The man is still coming. I'm looking for the man. The man is still coming. We're looking for the woman. The woman is still coming. Are these all your children? Oh, he said, there is one. Very small. Is the youngest of them all. We, we cannot think that, you know, something that was written so sublime and so great was for that a person. It's okay, call him. And he called him and he appeared. The day you appear, heaven will recognize you. And then God said, that's my man, that's my man. He doesn't look like that. She doesn't look like that. That is the person. You will fulfill the call of God for your life. And so God said, I have found a man. And the Lord today has found you. I said he has found you. That's why if you are not saved, as he spoke about Cyrus, before Cyrus ever knew the Lord, God said, I knew that man. He brought you here today to announce to you that your life is starting a purposeful destination from today in Jesus' name. If you are saved already, praise the Lord. You came here today for you to understand heaven is looking at you. God is looking at you. You are the man, you are the woman. I have found the man. I have found the woman. And you will fulfill everything the Lord has completely written down for you in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 6, conquer you are. You will conquer sin. Where is my amen? Romans chapter 6, verse 11. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, and alive but alive unto God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Look at what is written concerning the call, concerning the conqueror. For sin, let not sin reign in your mortal body. It will not. I am a conqueror. It says, let it not train your mortal body that you should, be, you should be it in its lost thereof. Verse 14, for sin shall not have dominion over me. For sin shall not have dominion over me. We champions don't do things like that. We conquerors don't do things like that. Sin, get away. It is gone in Jesus' name. You're going to have victory as a conqueror over sickness, over evil spirit. Sickness will not cut short your life. You have been called on purpose. 
you have been called as a man, as a woman of destiny. And every scene you are following, you are going to finish before you leave. And when you finish and you are leaving, you will leave triumphantly. You leave like the son and the daughter of a king. And then when you are coming home, heaven will stand at attention. He is coming. She is coming. She had followed the footsteps of Jesus Christ and she has finished. And he has finished all that God wanted him to do, wanted her to do. And when you enter, you enter gloriously into heaven in Jesus' name. Matthew, Matthew chapter 18. In Matthew chapter 18, I'm reading from verse, I'm reading from verse 18. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. Verily I, verily I say unto you, whatsoever it shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. That was written concerning me. I said it was written concerning me. Why do you have a pen and you never use the pen? Why do you have a book and you never read the book? Why do you have authority and you never use the authority? Why has something been given to you and reaching for you in particular and you never do it? Verse 18 will become part and parcel of your life from today. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, reading from verse 17. Evil spirits will bow as you are coming. Before you open your mouth, before you give the command, before you make a decree, because this is reaching concerning you. Are you there? What is she? What is she there? Authority will follow you home. Reaching concerning me. Concerning the conqueror. Luke chapter 10 verse 17. And the 70 returned again with joy. 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 Joy in your soul, joy in your heart, joy in your place of work, joy in your studies, joy in your school, joy on your past. The next time you are coming back here, you will return with testimonies of joy. And the seventy returned with, again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. That's what, what it's supposed to be. We're conquerors, and it is written concerning us. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to train on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, poison will not kill you. And nothing, accident will not kill you. And nothing, disaster will not kill you. And nothing, nothing that is not meant for you will come your way. Attacks, affliction, evil power, evil spirit, they're not made for you. They will not come near you in Jesus' name. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Your name is there. I said your name is there. John chapter 8, reaching concerning you. John chapter 8. 
from verse 11. She said, no man, Lord. The Lord had asked a question. Has no man condemned you? The court will not condemn you. Enemies will not condemn you. Pharisees will not condemn you. Religious people will not condemn you. They wanted to stone her. And they said, we caught this woman. And Jesus did not answer them. He will not answer your accusers. And then they kept on saying, what do you say? What do you say? What do you say? Then he looked up and he said, he that has no sin, you know, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He that has no sin, let him cast the first stone. And Jesus already made up his mind, this woman will be forgiven. And Jesus made up his mind, look at my friend there, you'll be forgiven. Look at him there, look at her there, you'll be forgiven. And all the accusers went away one by one. And Jesus now said, where are those the accusers? Has no man condemned thee? She said, no man, Lord. Then Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Because of the cross, neither do I condemn thee. Because of the blood is shed for you on the cross of Calvary, neither do I condemn you. Forgiveness has come to everyone. Salvation has come to everyone. But now look at this, what is written concerning those who are saved. Go and sin no more. Somebody give a great amen. The power of sin is broken in your life, out of your life, in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16, reaching concerning the conqueror. Romans chapter 16, verse 20. And the very God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The God of peace is giving you peace, giving you salvation. He will bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Grace, go home with you. Amen. Grace to conquer, go home with you. Amen. Grace to overcome, go with you. Amen. Grace to be an overcomer, go with you in Jesus' name. We have learned that Christ did not die to make us weaklings or slaves or captives. The reaching word is not given to keep us down or to make us less than ordinary, graceless people we will be stronger than all of them. It is reaching so that you'll be a conqueror. It is reaching so that You'll be an overcomer. You'll be a victor. You'll be a master. And we're called to overcome. I am called to be an overcomer. I am called to be a conqueror. We're called. We're converted. We're commissioned to conquer. I conquer sin. I conquer sickness. I conquer evil spirits. I conquer all strongholds. I conquer cell. I conquer self-centeredness. I conquer the shadows and the superstition. I conquer strangers. A strange woman will not take over your family. A strange personality will not take over your life. I conquer short-sightedness. You see, there are people, okay, say that, I conquer short-sightedness. The people, they cannot see far. They cannot see far. I pray the Lord will remove all the dimness out of your sight today in Jesus' name. I conquer slavery. 
I conquer servitude. Now come back to chapter 4 of Luke. Luke chapter 4. I'm reading from verse, verse 17. And this is what you'll make personal. It says in Luke chapter 4 verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was reaching. He found the place. He found the place. You will find the place. Number one, find your place. Find your place. Find your place. Don't just be here and there. You have a place. And you have a destined place for you. Find your place. Number two, find the promise. There is a promise waiting for you to claim. It's like a registered letter heaven has posted to you. And this is yours. Find the promise. Find the power. The power to accomplish. The power to do everything God has ordained for you to do in life. Find your place. Find your promise. Find your power. Find your passion. Don't just live like you're sleeping when you are walking. Don't live like you are tired. Don't live like life is over. Don't live like a dead corpse just walking. Don't live like trees walking. Find your passion. Find your purpose. That's the reason you came to this world. There's a reason you were born again. There's a reason you came into the kingdom. Find your purpose. Find your path. The path that leads to victory. Find it out. The path that leads you to overcoming. Find it out. Find your path. Find your place. You have a place. Find your promise. There's a promise waiting for you here today. Find your power. Find your passion. Find your purpose. Find your path. Find your priority. Something to concentrate on. Something to say. No other person can do this. No other person will go this direction. Here is what I'm committing my life to. Find your priority. Find the peak. Find the peak. The height where you're going. The highest point of life. Find your peak and aim at it. Aim at it. He found the place where it was reaching. And eventually he said, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. This is your day. I said, This is your day. The days of ordinary, all that, all that is gone. The days of non-achievement, all that is gone. And the days of just, you know, going about with no place, all that is gone. Today, rise up now, find your place. Rise up now and find your place. Rise up, rise up, tell the Lord, I find my place today. I find my place today. Find your place, find your place, find your place, find your place and stand there. Find your place and occupy that place. Find the promise, the promise that is waiting for you. You'll overcome sin, overcome sickness, overcome Satan, overcome evil spirit, overcome circumstances, overcome short-sightedness, overcome the strangers, overcome the shadows, overcome the superstition, overcome the strongholds. You are born to win. You are born to win. You are born to conquer. Find the path, find the path, find the path that leads you to the place you ought to get to. You'll not be a useless person, a worthless person. You'll not be a person that is just there. Find your place, find your place. Find your place, find the peak. And walk at it and aim at it. You will overcome. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. You're born to conquer. You're born to overcome. Find your place.